Hello, everyone, welcome back to Oni Chan. Today, we will witness the conclusion of the Wano battle. In this final part, Luffy has finally awakened Gear 5 and is getting ready for an intense battle with Kaido. But before that, Luffy's group, along with Kid and Law, must face both Yonko Big Mom and Kaido atop the castle. While Kid and Law deal with Big Mom, Luffy has to confront Kaido alone. Unexpectedly, at this moment, Luffy was knocked down by Kaido. So Zoro swiftly used his ultimate technique, Asura, to attack Kaido and rescue Luffy. Even though he was able to inflict injuries on Kaido, but it also left Zoro completely exhausted. When Kaido was about to finish off Zoro, Luffy woke up. At this moment, Luffy also realized that Kaido had infused his attacks with Conqueror's Haki. Therefore, Luffy was able to block Kaido's mace and even delivered a punch that knocked him down. At this moment, Luffy told Law to take Zoro down to the lower floor, as he would face Kaido alone. On Big Mom's side, she unleashed a powerful attack at Kid, unintentionally freeing Zeus in the process. Law realized that he couldn't allow Zeus to return to Big Mom, so he immediately used his devil fruit power to relocate Zoro and Zeus to another place. Meanwhile, Kaido has regained consciousness, making Luffy feel very excited, eager to continue using his newfound power. Kaido also feels delighted, so both of them continue to infuse Conqueror's Haki into their attacks and clash with each other, causing the entire Onigashima Island to shake. On Nami and Usopp's side, they are still being pursued by Page One, so they keep attacking him relentlessly, beating him up. At this moment, Otama wants to continue creating Kibadango to tame Kaido's subordinates, even though she is exhausted. However, Nami and Usopp stop her, because they still hold on to hope. Suddenly, Page One realizes that Otama is the reason behind the gifter's betrayal. When he tries to capture Otama, Nami immediately intervenes, and Usopp bombards him with explosive bullets. They thought they had won, but to their surprise, he remains unharmed. So, they all continue to run away. On Big Mom's side, she is still searching for Kid. Unexpectedly, she accidentally stumbles upon Nami's group, causing Nami and Usopp to be scared out of their wits. But when Big Mom sees Otama, she suddenly becomes very friendly and affectionate towards her. Prometheus realizes that whenever Big Mom interacts with children, she becomes like a mother figure to them. At this moment, Big Mom asks Otama about the people in the impoverished village who fed her red bean soup. Otama replies that the village was destroyed by Kaido's subordinates, which infuriates Big Mom, leading her to unleash her haki. Accidentally, Page One rushes in, intending to attack Nami's group. In response, Big Mom delivers a powerful punch, knocking Page One down to the ground. As Ulti arrives, she witnesses her younger brother being defeated. On Luffy's side, he is still battling with Kaido. Luffy keeps throwing a continuous barrage of punches at him, but Kaido manages to block them all. Then, Luffy immediately uses Gear 3 and infuses it with Conqueror's Haki. Even though Kaido tried to block it, he still got hit by Luffy's attack. This greatly pleases Kaido as Luffy has become much stronger now. On Sanji's side, he is carrying Zoro on his shoulder, while Zoro was injured and wrapped in bandages all over his body. It turned out that Law instantly teleported to Sanji's location. He then handed Zoro back to Sanji, not knowing how to administer first aid as he was a cook, not a doctor. As a result, Sanji tightly wrapped Zoro with bandages, making him look like a mummy. Suddenly, Sanji caught sight of two members of the Nine Red Scabbards, he should continue moving forward with them. At this moment, when Ulti saw Big Mom daring to attack her brother, it made her furious, she immediately charged in and attacked them all. So, she quickly rushed towards Nami and Usopp's group and used her ability to headbutt them, causing them to fall to the ground. Ulti kept advancing towards Otama and struck her in the face which immediately angered Big Mom. Nami was feeling really frustrated because Ulti dared to attack Otama. So, Nami immediately rushed in to attack Ulti. At this moment, she was determined to take care of Ulti once and for all. On Luffy's side, he was still fiercely battling Kaido, continuously landing hits on him. This made Kaido angry, prompting him to use the technique, Thunderclap 8 Trigrams, and sent Luffy flying, unexpectedly. This time Kaido acknowledged Luffy because he realized that Luffy was also enjoying the fight. So, Luffy charged again and used Gear 3 to deliver an incredibly powerful punch to Kaido. However, Kaido also released his Haki and retaliated against Luffy. Unexpectedly, Kaido was still stronger and sent Luffy flying once again. At this moment, Kaido said, You should give up, you won't change anything. However, 
Luffy paid no attention to Kaido's words and continued to charge at him, attacking relentlessly. Despite taking a powerful blow straight to the head, Luffy still tried to stand up and retaliate against Kaido. Luffy declared, I will definitely defeat you and save Wano country because I am the one who will become the Pirate King. On Nami's side, she managed to anger Ulti, who immediately rushed to grab her. Surprisingly, Ulti even turned to taunt Big Mom, insulting Otama as nothing more than a bratty kid with a milk stinking mouth. As a result, Big Mom became furious and combined all three of her homies. She then unleashed an incredibly powerful attack on Ulti. Ulti instantly defeated, at this moment, while they were planning to take Otama and leave, Nami noticed Zeus standing in a corner. She realized that Big Mom had just created a new homie. On Luffy's side, he continued to unleash powerful punches on Kaido. But Luffy's punches were nothing more than mosquito bites to Kaido. So, Kaido hit Luffy with a powerful blow, sending him flying, seeing Luffy lying face down on the ground. Kaido continued to approach him and relentlessly struck him with his club. Finally, he unleashed an exceptionally strong attack, Kaido said, is this your limit? He was surprised to see that Luffy still stood up and even managed to laugh in front of him. Kaido became very excited. Both of them continued to release their hockey and attack each other. Unexpectedly, Luffy was struck by an incredibly powerful blow from Kaido, sending him flying off Onigashima Island. While Kaido was disappointed that Luffy had been defeated, he noticed that Luffy fell into the sea. At this moment, he left and said, so, you are not Joy Boy either, on Big Mom's side, she directly stated that she no longer needed Zeus, she ordered Hera to eat Zeus, it turns out that Big Mom couldn't retrieve her own soul, as a result, she could only give Zeus to Hera to increase her power, causing Zeus to suffer and struggle in pain, suddenly Big Mom turned to Nami's group to snatch Otama away, it turned out that she intended to take care of Nami and Usopp without harming Otama, Big Mom chased after them, causing both Nami and Usopp to flee immediately. While Zeus was also trying to escape, he apologized to Nami for what he did before, but Nami couldn't forgive him, so, Zeus decided to sacrifice himself to help Nami's group escape. So, Zeus immediately unleashed a lightning attack aiming directly at Big Mom. However, to everyone's surprise, she easily caught him by the neck, it turned out that Zeus had run out of energy. Realizing that Zeus was about to be swallowed, Nami decided to have him eat, but she couldn't do it in time. Hera ended up swallowing Zeus whole, on Yamato's side, they were trying to run quickly towards Onigashima castle. Meanwhile, Momo was reading his father's logbook, which Yamato had given him, with this logbook, Momo came to know all about Odin's adventures, including his journey with Pirate King Roger in search of the Poneglyphs, from the Sky Island to the Fishman Island, and finally, to Zo, on the back of Zunisha. When they set foot on the last island, they learned the truth about the void century, spanning 800 years, Suddenly, Momo experienced a severe headache, at this moment, Hera had swallowed Zeus and even managed to grab Nami's sorcery clean attacked staff. Nami quickly pulled her staff back from Hera's mouth, realizing that staying there any longer would be life-threatening, the whole group quickly ran away, seeing that Otama didn't care about her and ran away. Big Mom became furious, she decided to take down all of them in her rage, fortunately, Kid appeared just in time and managed to block her attack. This made everyone happy and relieved that they were saved, on Chopper's side, he was still battling Queen, suddenly, Puro Puro shot arrows at the samurai, so Chopper stepped up to shield them, he realized that his rumble ball's effects would wear off soon, and he couldn't maintain his monster point any longer, Chopper remembered Caesar's advice at that moment, he could help Chopper increase the candy's effects tenfold, while Chopper was worried about the side effects of the drug, Caesar immediately scolded him, if you keep fearing the side effects, you won't be able to protect your friends. As a result, Chopper decided to improve his candy, at this moment, Queen continued his attack on Chopper, extending his long neck and biting him, however, Chopper kept fighting back, believing that Luffy would soon defeat Kaido, suddenly, Bao Huang announced to everyone that Luffy had been defeated by Kaido, leaving Chopper, Marco, and all the samurai shocked, the rest of Luffy's crew heard the news and couldn't believe that their captain had been defeated. Meanwhile, the Beast Pirates were overjoyed at the news of Luffy's defeat. While Momo was still suffering from a severe headache, at the same time, Kanjiro continued to disguise himself as Odin and approached Momo. Seeing his father, Momo became happy. But Kinemon and Kiku recognized that the person before them was actually Kanjiro in disguise. When Kiku charged in to attack the fake Odin, they were taken by surprise as Kanjiro impaled him with a sword. 
and Kanjiro also began to reveal his true form. As this traitor was about to continue dealing with Kinemon, then Kinemon got angry and directly put an end to Kanjiro's role. As they were about to leave, Kaido appeared in front of them, Kinemon stood up to block Kaido and let Momo escape. Kaido hit him with a very powerful attack. Meanwhile, Luffy was still sinking in the sea, and Chopper couldn't believe that Luffy had lost. All the other samurai were in shock as well, outside. Kaido is still carrying the island of Onigashima to the territory of Wano country. While Chopper is still sitting and crying, Puro Puro shoots many arrows into the middle of the battlefield. Queen was about to attack Chopper when suddenly Sanji appeared and kicked him straight in the face, causing Queen's head to spin like a top, accidentally blocking the incoming arrows, and he flew back towards Puro Puro. At this moment, Sanji told Chopper not to cry because Luffy is always the one who creates miracles. He then entrusted Zoro to Chopper to prepare for a fierce battle with Queen. On Kinemon's side, he still didn't give up and was determined to stop Kaido to protect Momo. This made Kaido angry, and he drew his sword to stab Kinemon through his body. Momo managed to capture a frog, which was used for communication by Bao Huang. It turned out that he had heard Luffy's voice, so, Momo regained his composure and conveyed to everyone, Luffy is still alive, and he will immediately come back to defeat Kaido. Instantly, he helped everyone to regain their spirits and boost their fighting will to defeat the beast pirates. Suddenly, Kaido appeared and continued to chase after Momo. So both of them were knocked out of the castle by Kaido. He said that the brat Luffy had no chance of defeating him, but Momo still believes that Luffy will defeat Kaido, which made Kaido furious and he attacked Momo. As a result, both of them were sent flying off Onigashima Island, on Nami's side, they were shocked to discover that Zeus was still alive and had merged with Nami's sorcery claim attacked. It turns out that when Zeus was swallowed by Hera, he was absorbed into Nami's sorcery claim attacked. At this moment, the whole group noticed Bao Huang, who is an informant for Kaido's crew. Suddenly, Ulti rushed forward and directly headbutted Usopp, so she continued to capture Otama, knowing that Otama could control the gifters. So, Nami immediately ran over and used Zeus to transform into an iron mace to push her away. But she still didn't stop. Usopp immediately attacked Ulti to save Otama. On Kid's side, he was planning to face Big Mom alone when Law also arrived to join in the fun and proposed forming an alliance with Kid. In another room, CP0 was still monitoring the course of the battle. Meanwhile, underwater, Law's teammates had found Luffy and immediately proceeded to rescue him. Yamato, on the other hand, had located Kaido, as they lifted Luffy to safety, they noticed his stomach was inflated like a ball, so, the tall guy immediately jumped on Luffy's body to help him vomit out the water, meanwhile, Momonosuke and Shinobu are still falling down, then, Shinobu transforms into a kite and carries Momo to the solid ground, both of them realize that Onigashima Island is approaching flower capital, on the other side, Nami notices that Usopp has rescued Otama from Ulti's grasp, she summons Zeus and creates a powerful lightning bolt to attack Ulti. But Ulti manages to dodge it. Surprisingly, she is still pursued by Zeus and gets electrified. In the end, Nami successfully defeats Ulti. Usopp realizes that Bao Huang is the informant of the beast pirates. Then he immediately attacks, summoning a carnivorous plant to defeat Bao Huang. As for the other members of the Straw Hat crew, they are still busy fighting the Tobi Ropo. Suddenly, the gifters who ate Otama's Kibi Dango arrive. At this moment, Otama realizes that everyone is still struggling in the battle. She steps forward and commands the gifters to form an alliance with Luffy to defeat Kaido. Surprisingly, upon hearing Otama's command, the gifters immediately change sides and turn to attack Queen. As of now, Otama is their new master, and they obey her orders without hesitation. On Yamato's side, she have found Kaido, Yamato expresses the desire to sever the parent-child relationship with him. This immediately angers Kaido, and he releases his devil fruit power to force Yamato to obey him. But this time, she was determined to defeat Kaido. Yamato immediately used Thunderclap 8 Trigrams to attack Kaido. On the side of the gifters, they turned against Kaido, surprising Jimbei and the others. Meanwhile, Queen remained unaware of what had happened but he realized that Otama was the cause. As he was about to blast her with a laser, Sanji swiftly intervened and delivered a powerful kick. Queen then transformed into his strongest form to face Sanji in a fierce battle. Meanwhile, Chopper suffered from the side effects of the rumble ball, turning him into a child. At this moment, Chopper discovered that Zoro had sustained 20 broken bones and couldn't continue fighting. However, Zoro was determined to keep on fighting. 
the mink doctor told them that their tribe possesses a powerful regenerative medicine that could instantly restore Zoro's strength for battle. However, the side effects would make Zoro experience double the pain. Despite that, Zoro didn't hesitate. He urged the mink doctor to inject the medicine into him immediately. On Jimbei's side, he was facing off against a Toby Ropo member named Hu. When Hu drew his sword and attacked Jimbei, then Jimbei immediately punched back at him. Suddenly, Hu leapt up and used his six powers technique to strike back at Jimbei. He immediately recognized that this technique was from the world government's special agents, and Jimbei also remembered that there was a former member of CP9 who escaped from prison, who then unleashed his devil fruit power, transforming into a tiger with sword-like fangs. He revealed that 13 years ago, he was indeed a CP9 member, highly regarded like Luchi, during a mission to protect the Gomu Gomu devil fruit, the legendary treasure of the world government, he was unexpectedly defeated and robbed by the red-haired Shank. The current possessor of that devil fruit was none other than Luffy, being incarcerated for losing the devil fruit, who turned into a pirate and harbored deep hatred for both Luffy and Shank. This led him to attack Jimbei in a fit of rage. Although Jimbei managed to block the attack, his hand started bleeding. While Hu was imprisoned, Luffy consumed the Gomu Gomu fruit and rose to fame among pirates, which fueled Hu's hatred towards Luffy even more. He believed that Luffy would never be able to defeat Kaido, as Law's crew is trying to treat Luffy. Jimbei firmly believes that Luffy will come back and says, I won't allow you to touch my captain, ever since Jimbei met Luffy at Impel Down, and then during the rescue of Ace, and when he saved Fishman Island, Jimbei decided to join the Straw Hat crew and view Luffy as my captain, at this moment, who keeps using tooth bullets to attack Jimbei, but Jimbei effortlessly dodges them all. So, he immediately inflated his muscles and activated Haki, deciding to fight fiercely with Jimbei, who rushed forward to attack Jimbei, but Jimbei managed to block and throw him down to the ground, surprisingly, who still wanted to continue chatting with Jimbei. When he was imprisoned, he heard a legend about the sun god Nika, an ancient hero who freed slaves. He believed there were similarities between Jimbei's fishman heritage and the legend, so he wanted Jimbei to tell him about it while he kept attacking Jimbei continuously. However, Jimbei, angered by this, broke two of Hu's fingers, no matter how much Hu attacked. It felt like mosquito bites to Jimbei. Jimbei then used Fishman Karate to deliver a powerful blow, defeating Hu. Meanwhile, Yamato was still engaged in combat with her father, Kaido, who was continuously forcing her to follow his ideology. However, Yamato was determined and believed that Luffy would come back soon. She decided to unleash her devil fruit power. On the other hand, Sanji was still fighting against Queen. Queen kept shooting lasers at him, but Sanji swiftly moved and dodged all the attacks. At this moment, the doctor decided to inject medicine into Zoro, enabling him to return to the battle once again. Frankie was still fighting Sasaki. Realizing that Sasaki was difficult to deal with, Sasaki transformed into his human beast form to fight Frankie. Despite using her devil fruit power, Yamato was still overpowered by Kaido. It turned out that Kaido had no intention of giving Yamato the devil fruit, but Yamato mistakenly ate it due to hunger. Sasaki launched himself with a spinning sword intending to deliver a finishing blow to Frankie. So, he rushed in to attack Frankie, making him step back. At this moment, he continued to spin the propeller on his neck and charged towards Frankie, attempting to pierce through his mech with his horns. However, to his surprise, he was caught by Frankie and immediately thrown to the ground, defeating Sasaki, on Luffy's side. After they tried to administer first aid, he eventually regained consciousness, but the first thing he said was that he wanted to eat meat. Meanwhile, Frankie continued to duel with Sasaki. Unexpectedly, he shattered Frankie's sword. Frankie pretended to flee, luring Sasaki to follow and using a recoil cannon attack similar to the sunny ship. However, Sasaki remained unfazed. So Frankie jumped out to give him another blast of laser. On Kaido's side, he revealed that Yamato's devil fruit is the mythical zone type devil fruit, which allows Yamato to transform into a mythical wolf. He then continued to charge at Yamato in order to compel Yamato to obey and rule Wano country. But Yamato said, I am Kazuki Odin, the one who will open up Wano country. She then created ice projectiles to attack Kaido. Vive, Kaido Ngay Lap Tuk Fong Ra Mo Luang Lua De Nan Chan Yamato. Meanwhile, Robin fell into Black Maria's trap, facing her childhood memories and an illusion of her lost mother. However, Robin also realized that it was just an illusion, 
so she immediately used her devil fruit power to dispel the illusions and defeat the enemies. Black Maria realized that the illusions had no effect on Robin and Brooke, so she decided to pursue them herself. At this moment, Black Maria continuously attacked both Robin and Brooke, using fire to pressurize them. Brooke discovered that Black Maria's staff had a soul. Therefore, Brooke immediately used his soul soul fruit power, causing Black Maria's staff to be frozen. Brooke also froze the room to extinguish the fire. At this moment, Black Maria claims that Sanji betrayed Robin by luring her into the trap. But Robin knows that it was because Sanji trusted her, and because Sanji would never strike a woman. So, Robin unleashed her devil fruit power and created a giant clone to grab Black Maria. However, when attacking with those giant arms, Robin got injured too. Black Maria then attempted to use poison to defeat Robin. But Robin managed to avoid it. Black Maria continued shooting her threads to capture Robin. On Luffy's side, he was being fed meat by Law's group, despite having eaten all the food on the ship. Luffy still felt hungry, suddenly, Momo heard Luffy's voice and rushed over to him, he then told Luffy the heartbreaking news that Kinnaman had been defeated by Kaido, seeing Momo crying inconsolably, Luffy became annoyed and scolded him, saying, you're the future shogun, aren't you? Why do you keep crying all the time? Thus, Luffy helped Momo regain his spirit, but he was still very hungry, nearby, Caribou accidentally spotted Luffy and realized that if he let Luffy lose, he would also be in trouble, so, he decided to share all of his food with them, on Robin's side, she was still being controlled by Black Maria, but she refused to give up, Black Maria started to torture her, causing Robin intense pain, however, Robin didn't back down and used another technique to attack Maria, but Maria was able to block it, Black Maria managed to capture Robin again and continued to punch her in the face, taking pleasure in tormenting her, meanwhile, Brooke remained calm as he dealt with Black Maria's subordinates, he understood that Robin was preparing for a serious battle with this woman. At this moment, Robin remembered the time two years ago when she was training with the Revolutionary Army. Koala wanted to teach Robin karate, while Sabo wanted to teach her Ryusoken. So, Robin decided to learn from both of them, making them very happy. At this moment, Robin decided to employ the karate that Koala had taught her, she struck straight at Black Maria, but her attack missed. Unexpectedly, Robin's real target was the ceiling. This turned out to be a technique she learned from Sabo, causing wooden beams to fall and extinguish all of Maria's fire. Surprisingly, Black Maria was now terrified as she saw Robin transform into what seemed like a demon. Robin then transformed into numerous arms and captured Black Maria. She said, because my teammates need me, I can transform into a demon for them. With determination, Robin used all her strength to break Black Maria's bones eventually achieving victory. Meanwhile, outside the battle, Brooke took care of the rest of Black Maria's subordinates. At Luffy's side, thanks to Caribou's food, he managed to recover. As for Momo, he asked for Shinobu's help. He asked her to use her devil fruit power to help Momo transform into an adult. Only then can he transform into a large dragon to take Luffy back to Onigashima Island. But Shinobu refused because if he does that, he won't be able to turn back to his small form again. On the castle side, Many Topi Ropo have been defeated, and the people of the flower capital are still happily celebrating the festival. Unaware that Kaido is bringing Onigashima to their location, while Luffy is getting as round as a ball, but with just one breath, he can digest everything. Meanwhile, Shinobu, upon seeing Momo's determination, agreed to use her devil fruit power to help Momo transform into an adult. On the other side, killers seem to be overpowering Hawkins, but due to Hawkins' ability to transfer damage to others, he remained unscathed. Meanwhile, Kid was gathering all the metal around him to confront Big Mom head-on. Unexpectedly, Kid was struck by a slash, and it turned out that Hawkins had transferred the damage to him, as he wanted to see Killer kill his own captain. When Big Mom was about to finish off Kid, Law intervened to block her attack, but Kid refused to give up, continuing to attract metal. Kid fought against Big Mom. Sanji was still locked in combat with Queen when, to his surprise, King also arrived to join the attack, now, he found himself facing both of Kaido's top commanders alone, because they were too strong, as a result, Sanji was knocked away and crashed into the wall, it turned out that Marco had reached his limit, so he couldn't hold King anymore, as Queen was about to finish Marco off, Sanji immediately rushed to kick him away, meanwhile, Puro Puro was planning to attack Sanji by surprise, but he unexpectedly got smacked out by Nakomamushi, on the other hand, King has located Chopper's group, 
while Sanji is trying his best to fight. Zoro has not regained consciousness yet. At this moment, King is about to take them all down. But fortunately, Marco returns in time to stop him. It turns out that thanks to his incredible regenerative ability, Marco can recover quickly like that. At this moment, Marco revealed King's true identity as a member of an ancient race with the ability to produce fire. It turns out that he was stalling for time, as he noticed that Zoro had recovered. When Queen fired a laser beam at Marco, Zoro finally returned to the battle. Zoro swiftly parried the attack with just one slashing strike. At this moment, both Zoro and Sanji unleashed their hockey and charged at King and Queen with incredible speed, delighting their entire team. But King and Queen quickly got back on their feet in front of them, while the other samurai watched with concern. After all, King, Queen, and Jack were known as the All Stars, the strongest forces of Kaido. Jack was the drought, Queen was the plague, and King was the conflagration. Despite the intimidating titles, Kuhio still believed that they could win the battle. Suddenly, King launched an attack on Sanji, so Zoro immediately stepped in to block him. Queen continued his assault on Zoro, but Sanji swiftly kicked him away. Queen realized that Sanji was a member of Jerma 66. Hearing this name reminded him of his accursed family. This made Sanji furious, and he immediately struck back at Queen. Zoro also quickly attacked King, but he managed to block and punch Zoro back. At this moment, Zoro realized that King wasn't a swordsman. Meanwhile, Hio recognized that Zoro was somehow connected to Yushimaru, the legendary samurai, Ryuma, because he is also a one-eyed samurai, just like Zoro. While Zoro and Sanji fiercely fought on, Kid and Law were still at the mercy of Big Mom's overwhelming power. She continued to release her conqueror's hockey, subduing both of them. On Yamato's side, things weren't any better, constantly being pushed back by Kaido's relentless attacks. Inwarashi was still battling Jack, even though Jack had transformed into his strongest form. He was still overpowered as Inwarashi grabbed his elephant trunk and hurled him outside. It turns out that Inwarashi's purpose of going outside was to trigger his Sulong transformation. Likewise, on Nakomamushi's side, he also transformed into Sulong to deal with Puro Puro. At this moment, on Luffy's side, they witnessed a massive, fearsome dragon appearing, which terrified everyone. However, Luffy realized that it was none other than Momo. Shinobu had used her devil fruit power to age Momo into a 28-year-old young man. Luffy was thrilled because Momo could now fly him back to search for Kaido. As Momo flew up, he became afraid of heights, which led to both of them tumbling down. While Yamato was still being pummeled by Kaido, the latter kept reproaching Yamato for idolizing Odin and not obeying him. It turned out that since childhood, Yamato had always wanted to leave the island. Suddenly, Yamato activated the conqueror's hockey. It caused Kaido's soldiers to faint. However, Yamato was continually captured and brought back by Kaido because Yamato always identified as Odin himself. As a result, Kaido decided to imprison Yamato together with the three samurai lords of Wano. It turned out that Kaido had starved them, intending to break their will and force all three of them to join the beast pirates. He only provided them with a limited amount of food. Yamato kept thinking that they would be killed. Unexpectedly, they gave their portion of food to Yamato, making them very happy. As a result, Yamato showed the three samurai lords Odin's logbook and asked them to teach them how to read it. Yamato learned about Odin's entire journey through this logbook. The three samurai lords realized that Yamato genuinely wanted to protect Wano, so they decided to sacrifice themselves in the fight and entrusted the future of Wano to Yamato. At this moment, Yamato was determined to defeat Kaido and reclaim freedom for Wano. So, both Yamato and Kaido continued to use the Thunderclap 8 trigrams technique. On Luffy's side, they noticed that even though Momo had grown in size, his soul was still that of an eight-year-old boy. Hence, Luffy pulled Momo's eyes, forcing him to fly up into the air. While Yamato was able to block Kaido's attacks and even made him bleed, Yamato transformed her club into ice and unleashed a powerful strike against Kaido, causing him to bleed even more. This attack forced Kaido to crash into the ground. At this point, Kaido became furious and released his hockey to discipline this rebellious daughter of his. After escaping from prison, Yamato had to constantly hide and endure hunger and thirst. Fortunately, there was a kind soldier who brought food for Yamato. However, the next day, the soldier was executed by Kaido, intensifying Yamato's hatred towards him. As a result, Kaido continued to overpower Yamato, as their difference in strength was too vast. While Luffy managed to get Momo to fly up, despite Momo keeping their eyes tightly shut, 
they were successful in getting Luffy airborne. Eventually, they caught sight of Kaido, but Momo was too scared to open their eyes, causing them to crash straight into the castle, surprising everyone who couldn't understand who this pink dragon was. And everyone also saw Luffy returning. Meanwhile, Kid and Law were still engaged in battle with Big Mom. Then they saw Luffy flying up into the sky. But in the end, Luffy also managed to fly up to the top of the castle. While Yamato was preparing to deliver a decisive blow to Kaido, Luffy and Momo also caught sight of him. They immediately joined the fight, and Luffy switched to Gear 4 state. Together with Yamato, they unleashed a powerful attack on Kaido, sending him flying through several layers of walls and causing tremors atop the castle. Yamato was delighted to see Luffy return. However, Yamato was still unaware of the identity of the pink dragon. To their surprise, Kaido quickly returned and taunted Luffy, saying, You are still alive, Straw Hat. Luffy responded to Kaido, saying, How can I die? I'm the one who will become the Pirate King. Kaido was also curious about the Pink Dragon's identity. Upon seeing Kaido, Momo started to tremble as the memories of almost being killed by Kaido haunted him. But this time, Momo showed more courage and revealed his name, saying, I am Momonosuke, the one who will become the ruler of Wano, on dog and cat side. They were fighting fiercely against Jack and Puro Puro. Suddenly, the moon was covered by clouds, causing them to lose their Sulong transformation. Taking advantage of this, Puro Puro turned the tables on them. At this moment, Kaido didn't want two dragons to appear, so he was determined to deal with Momo. As Kaido was about to breathe fire on both Luffy and Momo, Luffy advised Momo to breathe fire as well. However, Momo didn't know how to breathe fire, so he could only dodge. Luffy told Momo, if you can't shoot fire, then bite him. Luffy then activated Gear 3 and delivered a powerful punch to Kaido's head. While Momo was still filled with fear, the memory of his mother being killed by Kaido fueled his anger. Momo gathered his courage and charged at Kaido, determined to bite him, causing him great pain. Realizing that Kaido was about to breathe fire at Momo, Luffy immediately intervened and punched Kaido, stopping his attack. Luffy then said to Momo, the one you bit is one of the four emperors, what else in this world can scare you? Finally, Momo overcame his fear, Luffy said, go and stop Onigashima. I will definitely defeat Kaido. Everyone was delighted to see Luffy return, while Sanji and Zoro were still locked in combat with Queen and King. At this moment, Zoro said to Sanji, it's time for us to fight for real. So, both of them immediately got serious and fought earnestly against their opponents. Meanwhile, Kaido transformed into his powerful, human beast form, the strongest state for combat, to face Luffy, determined. Luffy also decided to go all out against Kaido. They both unleashed their hockey and charged at each other causing the entire Onigashima Island to tremble under the intensity of their clash. Everyone could feel the intensity of the battle on top of the castle, so fierce that it split the sky in half. Yamato noticed this phenomenon was similar to the fight between Whitebeard and Roger. Due to this, the moon revealed itself, allowing Inwarashi and Nakomamushi to regain their Sulong forms and turn the tables against Jack and Parispero. Meanwhile, Yamato jumped on Momo's back to help him in stopping Onigashima Island. Suddenly, Kaido attacked them, and Yamato swiftly returned to restrain him. Luffy also rushed in to capture Kaido, as he was determined to face him in battle. While Yamato and Momo were falling down, Yamato taught Momo how to create clouds. It turned out that dragons don't fly but rather use clouds to soar into the sky. Eventually, Momo managed to fly using this method. Meanwhile, Inwarashi and Nakomamushi regained their Sulong forms and decided to put an end to the two troublesome foes. They charged together and dealt with them decisively. At this moment, Momo had just learned how to create clouds, making him very happy. Suddenly, Yamato noticed a large number of rocks falling down and realized that Kaido's strength had decreased. Meanwhile, Luffy was still in combat with Kaido. Momo decided to use his head to push the island back since it was getting dangerously close to the capital. Yamato advised Momo to create even stronger, flame clouds, than Kaido's to stop the island. Yamato also revealed that there were many explosives inside the castle. If they didn't stop the island, the entire capital would be destroyed. While all the citizens remained unaware, they continued to celebrate the festival blissfully. On Zoro's side, he is still fighting fiercely against King. As for Sanji, he is continuously being attacked by Queen, which sends him flying and makes him think that he might have broken some bones. Surprisingly, Sanji feels completely fine, not even losing a single strand of hair. 
Zoro has used the three sword style and immediately cut off one of King's horns, making him furious and unleash his devil fruit powers. King continuously swings his wings, attacking Zoro. Unexpectedly, that attack sent Zoro flying, but luckily, Frankie caught him. Zoro realized that King is very powerful. On Sanji's side, he is still being continuously attacked by Queen, but he realizes that his body is behaving strangely. At the same time, King has found Zoro and launches an attack on him. Zoro uses his three sword style to block the attack, but he is once again sent flying. It seems like Zoro is about to fall off the island, but he manages to swing his swords in the air and propel himself back up. He is now ready to face King once again. On Momo's side, he is trying to create flame clouds bigger than Kaido's, but he hasn't succeeded yet. So, Yamato decides to enter the castle to deal with all the explosives inside. She releases her devil fruit power to climb into the castle. On another side, the CP0 agents are still monitoring the battle and informing Luchi. He says that if Kaido loses, the world government will take control of all of Wano. But the masked man named Gwenitsa still doesn't believe that Kaido can be defeated. Luchi instructs him to capture Robin because only she can read the ancient language, while Robin and Brooke are running to gather with everyone else. Queen forces Sanji to hand over the Jerma superhero suit to him. Making Sanji angry, Sanji continuously attacks Queen because Queen mentioned his ruthless and cruel family. Sanji then delivers a powerful flaming kick, sending Queen flying. Everyone thinks that they have defeated Queen, unexpectedly, Queen remains unfazed, so he decides to unleash his special ultimate move. Suddenly, Queen separates his head from his body like a snake, surprising everyone. He grabs Sanji and starts squeezing him, intending to break all of his bones. Sanji is in intense pain, but he refuses to use the power of Jerma. This angers Queen, who takes out two missile-like projectiles from his body and accidentally fires them at himself. This gives Sanji the opportunity to escape, but he is already weakened by the attack. Chopper is worried and plans to treat Sanji, but they are surprised to find that Sanji's body is very unusual. Despite his bones being completely broken, he can still move and even adjust his bones by himself. At this moment, Sanji realizes that he has awakened his dormant genetic modification. Just like them, when Queen tries to secretly attack Sanji with his sword, unexpectedly, his sword breaks. It turns out that since he was young, Sanji has always been considered a failed scientific experiment by his family because he couldn't awaken his genetic modification, however, in this battle, Sanji has awakened it. Meanwhile, Killer is still fighting against Hawkins. Hawkins wonders why Killer is laughing despite being injured. He then realizes that Killer has been forced to eat a faulty devil fruit by Orochi. Even he ends up laughing at Killer. Now, Hawkins stands still, allowing Killer to attack him, but Killer cannot retaliate because if he does, Kid will die. So, Hawkins attacks Killer to force him to fight back. While Kid is still injured, he persists in gathering metal to attack Big Mom. She retaliates by using Prometheus to strike Kid. Law immediately teleports him back. But suddenly Kid continues to feel pain. Law still doesn't know what problem Kid is facing. Big Mom unleashed her power to deal with both of them, but they managed to stand up again. Kid still couldn't understand why he was experiencing the headache. It turned out that Hawking was thrusting his head into the pillar himself. It caused Kid to be continuously injured. When Hawking said, everyone will die here, Killer replied, Kid will never die here and become the Pirate King. As a result, Hawking became furious and continuously attacked Killer because he believed they would never defeat the Yonko. Killer continued to taunt him as a coward for submitting to Kaido's strength, which infuriated Hawking even more. At this moment, Killer realized the secret of Hawking. He immediately rushed to attack Hawking and cut off one of his arms. This action caused Hawking immense pain as he couldn't understand why he was getting injured. It turned out that Kid had already lost one arm. So, Killer managed to break Hawking's control over Kid and helped him escape from Hawking's manipulation. At this moment, Hawking decided to unleash his devil fruit power and transformed into a giant straw man to attack Killer. However, Killer easily blocked and defeated him in the blink of an eye. In the meantime, Kid finally got to fight freely, on Sanji's side, he surprised everyone by breaking Queen's sword without even using Haki. Queen realized that it was the technology of Jerma. While Sanji was in shock, he feared that he might turn into a cold-hearted person like his siblings. At this moment, Queen continued to attack Sanji relentlessly, trying to force him to use Jerma's superhero suit. However, Sanji refused to use it. On the side of the Otama group, they saw Kinemon's legs running around in a scattered manner. As it turns out, 
Kinemon's ability to run around with his separated body was a result of Law's previous actions. He was able to use this skill now. Kiku was in danger, so Kinemon asked them to quickly go and help Kiku. On Robin and Brooke's side, they were discovered by the CP0 agents. Meanwhile, Kinemon was waiting for the others to come and assist. Suddenly, they noticed that Kanjiro was still alive and talking to Orochi. At this moment, Kanjiro used his last breath to draw a monstrous fire creature that set ablaze Kaido's entire castle. While Luffy was fiercely battling Kaido, Kid and Law were working together to defeat Big Mom. However, Big Mom had the support of three powerful homies, which made it easy for her to push back Kid and Law. At this moment, Kid realized that Law had not fully unleashed his devil fruit power yet. Knowing that Law had awakened his devil fruit as well, it turned out that both Kid and Law had awakened their devil fruits, but they were saving it for critical situations. They decided to combine their powers and unleash their ultimate moves. Kid released his power, gathering and manipulating all the metal around him, transforming into a gigantic robot. He immediately attacked Big Mom, but she countered with a powerful strike that sent Kid flying away. At that moment, Big Mom was about to finish off Kid. But Law activated the awakened power of his Devil Fruit. He enveloped his sword with his Devil Fruit ability. He extended his sword, stabbing through Big Mom's body, and immediately, he electrified her from the inside. Although it could injure Big Mom, she still remained unharmed. Suddenly, Kid also activated his Devil Fruit power, turning Big Mom into a giant magnet attracting all the metal debris and even large iron pillars towards her. With the combination of Law's power, they unleashed an immensely powerful attack on Big Mom, causing everything to collapse around them. Everyone was surprised by the overwhelming strength they displayed. But unexpectedly, Big Mom was still alive, which made her even more furious because they dared to insult a Yonko. So, Big Mom unleashed her devil fruit power, sucking out the lifespan of the Kaido soldiers who were nearby, and Big Mom summoned back her homies. At this moment, she continued sacrificing one year of her lifespan to enhance her power and transform into a giant, Big Mom said. So you want to take my position as a Yonko, huh? Then let's see what you've got. However, Kid and Law showed no fear and were determined to fight her to the end. At this moment, Sanji still firmly refused to use the Germa suit. Suddenly, a geisha girl cried out for help. Unintentionally, Sanji bumped into her, causing her to be frightened and reluctant to approach him, seeing their sister being attacked. Other girls also became cautious and drove him away, leaving Sanji disappointed. As soon as he stepped out, Queen began teasing and mocking Sanji again, because of Sanji's code of never hitting women and his desire not to be like his emotionless family. While Queen kept provoking and taunting Sanji, he was struggling internally, trying to figure out what kind of person he needed to become to help Luffy become the Pirate King. In the end, Sanji made a decision and took out the Germa suit, which excited Queen, unexpectedly, Sanji shattered the suit because he would never become a part of the Germa family. On Zoro's side, he is busy fighting with King when suddenly someone calls him on the Den Den Mushi. Zoro doesn't understand who is calling him at this moment. It turns out to be Sanji who tells him, if after this battle, I lose control of myself, then please kill me. Although Zoro doesn't know what's happening, he agrees with Sanji and says, you're not allowed to die before I kill you. Finally, Sanji decided to unleash all his strength to defeat Queen. Surprisingly, Sanji vanished at an incredibly fast speed and delivered a powerful kick to Queen. Meanwhile, Kid and Law were under a relentless attack from Big Mom, forcing them to strategize how to deal with her. On the other hand, Robin was being hunted down by CP0 agents. Suddenly, Kanjiro's fire monster fell down and promptly swallowed the CP0 agents whole. It turned out that Orochi intended to use this monster to burn down the entire castle. Suddenly, Orochi heard the sound of Hayori's loot, which delighted him as he believed his beloved was still alive. Meanwhile, Momonosuke continued his efforts to create flame clouds to hinder Onigashima's movements. As for Zoro, he is still facing off against King. Suddenly, King pulled back his stretched mask from behind, creating a strong counterforce. King rushed at Zoro with incredible speed, making it impossible for him to block. So Zoro decided to counterattack. He immediately unleashed the hockey of his sword. Enma, creating a whirlwind to attack King. However, King easily broke through the attack. At this moment, King drew his sword and faced Zoro. He realized that King's body was incredibly sturdy, and the flame behind him was very peculiar as well. Zoro didn't know what race King belonged to. Then, King attacked Zoro and sent him flying, leaving him exhausted. At this moment, Zoro heard the sound of Hayori's musical instrument. Surprisingly, 
the Enma sword autonomously absorbed Zoro's Haki, causing him great pain, while Orochi was very pleased to be reunited with his crush, on Yamato's side, she were trying to find a way to stop the fire-breathing monster and realized that if it continued down to the lower levels, it would reach the explosives beneath, potentially destroying the entire castle. So, Yamato hurriedly ran down to the basement to prevent any disaster. Meanwhile, the two CP0 agents were safe and still determined to find Robin. Suddenly, Apu got involved in the situation, and he was swiftly dealt with, despite knowing Drake's undercover identity as a marine agent, they still intended to eliminate him, however, to their surprise, Apu was still alive and attacked them, this led Drake and Apu to decide to team up and take care of these two troublemakers, Momo continued to exert all his strength to pull the entire island, but it still wouldn't budge, meanwhile, Zoro was struggling as he was being drained of hockey due to hearing Hayori's melody, although, Zoro eventually regained control of Enma, but King relentlessly attacked Zoro once more, sending him flying, suddenly, King stood still, allowing Zoro to strike him, unexpectedly, King's body exploded, sending Zoro flying into a wall, Zoro was unsure why King's body was unusually strong and sturdy, at this moment, Zoro decided to put all his strength into one sword strike, he quickly injured King with great speed, but King remained unfazed, as King lunged at Zoro once again, Enma suddenly went out of control, leaving Zoro unable to evade the attack, in that moment, he recalled the cursed sword he had obtained, the Kitetsu sword, it turned out that the sword belonged to the old blacksmith, while still being attacked by King, Zoro recalled the Wado Ichimanji sword that once belonged to Kuina, he couldn't understand why a sword from the East Blue ended up in Wano country, at this moment, King continued his assault on Zoro, in response, Zoro quickly ran to retrieve the Enma sword and managed to block King's attack, However, due to the force of the clash, Zoro was sent flying into a nearby building. Looking at the Enma sword, suddenly Zoro recalled an old fisherman he had known in his village when he was young. The fisherman had some connection to Wano country, because the old man blacksmith had said that both the Wado Ichimanji and Enma swords were crafted by a legendary blacksmith named Kozaburo. It turns out that Kozaburo had left Wano country 50 years ago. Zoro remembered that when he was young, he always lost to Kuina which made him frustrated, so, he often went to play with the, old man fisherman, who was also Kuina's grandfather, seeing Zoro's passion for swordsmanship, the old man decided to give him two real swords, he taught Zoro many things and also shared stories about the Enma sword, which was also known as the, great king of hell, now, Zoro recalled the memories of the Enma sword, on Momo's side, he is still trying to pull the island, but the, flame clouds, he creates are too weak, Suddenly, Momo realizes that he can control Kaido's clouds, so he immediately pulls them away. Zoro realizes that Enma has chosen him, thanks to recalling the teachings of the old man fisherman. Zoro finally manages to control Enma. Even Odin had a hard time controlling the sword. Suddenly, a group of foolish soldiers attacked Zoro. While he had mastered his hockey, unexpectedly, he inadvertently unleashed his conqueror's hockey, causing the soldiers to faint. King immediately asked, do you intend to become a king? Zoro suddenly remembered that he had also made a promise with Luffy that he would become the world's strongest swordsman. Queen was still infuriated by the destruction of the Germa technology by Sanji. So he shot a laser at him, he recognized that this skill belonged to Ichiji. Then Queen continued to electrocute Sanji, which was Niji's skill, but Sanji continued to move swiftly towards Queen. It turned out that Queen had thoroughly studied the technology of Germa enabling him to mimic all of their techniques. Queen continued to capture Sanji and threw him using Yanji's technique. However, Sanji was the only one that Queen had not studied thoroughly, which frustrated him, as Queen was about to finish him off. Sanji retaliated with a flaming kick, breaking Queen's arm. Sanji was annoyed because this unpleasant guy kept constantly mentioning his demon family, Sanji, in anger, immediately kicked him, making him hit the wall. However, he managed to stand up again, Moreover, he taunted Sanji, saying that eventually, he would become a heartless person. This made Sanji even more frustrated and determined to defeat Queen. Unexpectedly, Queen was able to use Sanji's own invisibility technique against him. When Queen attempted to attack him from behind, Sanji quickly circled back to find Queen. Suddenly, he noticed a geisha girl chasing a mouse. Turns out, she was injured last time because Queen had attacked her because of his frustration from being rejected when confessing his feelings, he used his invisibility and sneakily attacked her, blaming Sanji for it, 
When he was about to attack her again, Sanji realized that he still had a strong affinity for women and hadn't changed at all. So, Sanji swiftly moved towards him. Sanji unleashed his full power, manifesting a blue flame and delivered a direct kick to Queen's face. At this moment, Sanji's speed and strength reached a whole new level. Even Queen's provocations had no effect on him anymore. He knew that he was the cook on the Straw Hat Pirate's ship, and with this newfound determination, he charged at Queen with incredible speed. With a mighty kick, Sanji ended the fight, sending Queen flying off the island for good. The girl realized that Sanji had saved her, and her fear of him vanished. Despite being exhausted, Sanji emerged victorious from the battle. On Zoro's side, he managed to control Enma and continuously attacked King. However, King's body was remarkably unique and tough, making it difficult for Zoro to land a hit on him. Zoro believed that there must be a weakness, so he put all his strength into a powerful strike. Surprisingly, this time he managed to cleave King's mask in half, revealing King's face and astonishing his subordinates. Realizing that King's face was specially wanted by the government, with a bounty of 100 million belly, he was surprised to see that King killed his own subordinates. Without hesitation, King immediately turned back to attack Zoro. Suddenly, Zoro realized he couldn't prolong the battle any longer, so he decided to go all out against King. While King boasted that Kaido would become the Pirate King, Zoro unleashed his full strength, using his demon slash attack with lightning speed against him. Meanwhile, King also released his own power to counter Zoro's attack, and he remembered when Kaido had just saved him from the government's experiment facility. Because Kaido recognized that King belonged to the legendary Lunarian tribe with the ability to produce fire, he wanted King to join his pirate crew. So, Kaido rescued him from the facility and when Kaido learned his real name was Alber, he decided to give him the nickname, King. King was determined to defeat Zoro, so he rushed forward and struck him with a powerful attack, however, Zoro managed to block and push King back, undeterred. King continued his assault, unexpectedly, Zoro landed a powerful strike on King's body, but King still didn't flinch or show any signs of pain, so, Zoro immediately jumped in and launched another attack, but unexpectedly, King knocked him away again, despite that, Zoro could still continue the fight, at this moment, King decided to fly up and create a circle of fire, preparing to deliver a decisive blow to Zoro, so Zoro countered with his own attack, continuously splitting the fire dragons that King created. Zoro decided to end the battle and unleashed all his strength, charging directly at King. Finally, Zoro defeated him. Suddenly, King remembered that Kaido had once proclaimed himself as Joy Boy, the one who would create a new world, so he was determined to help Kaido become the Pirate King. However, at this moment, King was defeated. Zoro realized that only when he becomes the world's greatest swordsman can he truly be worthy of accompanying Luffy, so he aspired to become the King of Swordsmen. Finally, Zoro emerged victorious, but at this moment, he was also exhausted. CP0 was surprised to learn that the Straw Hat Pirates had defeated all the All-Stars of Kaido, but if they don't win against two Yonko, then their battle would be considered meaningless. Meanwhile, Big Mom was dominating Kid and Law in the battle. Meanwhile, Luffy is fiercely battling Kaido, and Yamato has to run down to the basement quickly before the fire monster reaches the explosives below. Usopp has found Kinemon and helped to reattach his body parts, while he was about to assist Kiku, he got surrounded by Kaido's troops. Fortunately, Izo arrived just in time to deal with them, seeing his injured brother wanting to give up, Izo took off his shirt to show his determination, he held back the soldiers, to let Usopp escort Kinemon and Kiku away from this place, while Orochi is leisurely enjoying the music and deluding himself that he will marry Hiyori. Apu saw Drake being defeated by the CP0 and realized that staying there would be fatal, so, he quickly ran away. On Luffy's side, he continues to fight fiercely against Kaido, even though he is still overwhelmed. Whenever Kaido attacks, Luffy immediately counterattacks. Luffy activates Gear 3 and delivers a direct punch to Kaido's face. At this moment, both of them are exhausted, but they are also happy because of this intense battle. While Momo is struggling to pull the entire Onigashima Island, Kaido takes out some sake and drinks it in front of Luffy. Infuriating him, Kaido said, Do you want a drink? Luffy replied, After defeating you, we'll have a feast with everyone. This suddenly made Kaido angry, but he started crying and laughing at the same time. Luffy realized that he was drunk. Kaido was so unsteady on his feet that it enraged Luffy, who then rushed in to attack Kaido. Unexpectedly, his technique was called, Shuren Hake. Kaido transformed and swung his club. 
delivering a powerful blow to Luffy, knocking him unconscious, while Kaido contemplated, after this battle, I'll have to rebuild the castle, Luffy regained consciousness and remained undeterred, he continued to attack Kaido, unexpectedly, Kaido used, demolishing wind, to block him, Luffy realized that Kaido was drunk and started crying uncontrollably, despite being in a fit of rage, Kaido was still able to fight Luffy fiercely, suddenly, Luffy realized Kaido's weakness and delivered a kick that made Kaido take him seriously, after that strike, Kaido sobered up and unleashed a fiery breath attack at him, but Luffy managed to dodge and flew up, using a barrage of punches, Kaido retaliated immediately, but surprisingly, Luffy was able to push him back, on the side of the world government's sacred land. The five elders are discussing a legendary devil fruit that no one has been able to awaken for 800 years, and they have to give it a different name to conceal its true identity. At this moment, Chopper has returned to his normal form, and Izo has dealt with all of Kaido's subordinates, though he is also heavily injured. Unexpectedly, two CP0 agents appear. Meanwhile, Yamato is rushing down to the basement to prevent the fire creature from reaching the explosives. She immediately transforms and freezes the entire warehouse, preventing the creature from reaching the explosives. Thanks to Yamato's actions, the creature is unable to reach the explosives. As a result, the creature is immediately knocked away by Yamato. However, it quickly returns and spews flames at Yamato. On Law and Kid's side, they are being overwhelmed by Big Mom for daring to gang up on an older person causing both of them to collapse again. At this moment, Big Mom wonders why Kaido still hasn't defeated Luffy. She decides to head to the top of the castle to check it out, which infuriates Law. He immediately uses his devil fruit powers to immobilize her with his sword to capture her. Law immediately shocks Big Mom again, causing her to writhe in pain and fall down. Kid has also regained consciousness and utilizes his devil fruit power to merge with metal and transform into a gigantic robotic bull and he immediately rushes in to suck Big Mom away. At this moment, Kid continues to attack Big Mom. Despite her efforts to resist, Big Mom is still pushed away by Kid's attack. Law felt annoyed as the other guy was stealing his spotlight. Suddenly, Big Mom regained consciousness, and despite her broken arm, she used her soul power to heal herself. This made her even more excited. Law warned that he only had strength for one more attack, and if they failed, they would both be defeated. Big Mom summoned three swords from her homies and struck a powerful blow at them, however, Kid managed to block it and then rushed in, turning Big Mom into a magnetic attraction to metal. Kid continued his assault, and Law kept teleporting and attacking her in quick succession. Despite their excellent coordination, Big Mom was still too powerful. She easily knocked both Law and Kid away. Enraged, she unleashed the full strength of her soul-based devil fruit powers combining all three homies to create a colossal female monster that attacked Kid. The sight of this frenzied monster terrified everyone. As Big Mom prepared to finish off Kid, La promptly teleported the entire building, causing it to fall on top of Big Mom's head. Seizing the opportunity, La jumped down and thrust his sword at Big Mom. This time, his sword extended and pierced through the entire island, reaching the molten magma beneath the ground. So, Big Mom continued to punch him in the face. But Law didn't give up, he shocked Big Mom with a powerful electric attack, creating a huge pit that made her stumble. Seeing this, Kid stepped in and created a magnetic gun, firing it straight at Big Mom, however, she resisted and defiantly said, it's time for all of you to end. So, she immediately released her devil fruit power, sucking the souls of everyone around her. But Kid and Law were the only ones who were not affected by her age-stealing ability. This surprised Kaido's men who exclaimed, aren't they afraid of the Yonko? At this moment, Locke continued to use his devil fruit power, creating a protective circle around Big Mom. Surprisingly, this circle could nullify all sound, just like Corazon's ability, thus, Big Mom couldn't instill fear in others and steal their lifespans. Finally, both Law and Kid delivered decisive blows that sent Big Mom tumbling down to the lower level. Yamato was surprised because she couldn't hear anything at all. Unexpectedly, Big Mom fell right into a pile of explosives, resulting in her complete defeat and being thrown off Onigashima Island. At this moment, Big Mom recalled the time when Roger was executed, as he had ignited the era of pirates. Only by doing so could they create new powerful generations like that. However, she still regrets not finding the One Piece. In the end, Big Mom fell into the abyss and exploded, officially ending her era. Kid and Law emerged victorious against one of the Yonko. While Momo is still struggling to pull the entire Onigashima Island, 
He hears the call of Zunesha. Yamato manages to push back the lava monster and coincidentally sees Momo. He informs Yamato that Zunesha is approaching and is actually a comrade of Joy Boy from 800 years ago. On the other side, Izo has confronted CP0 and realizes that they are currently targeting the Straw Hat crew. Izo decides to stop them and immediately attacks. However, the CP0 agents are too fast, making it difficult for Izo to handle both of them alone. Eventually, Izo gets overwhelmed and knocked unconscious, but he manages to take down one of the agents. Meanwhile, the remaining CP0 agent is frustrated as they still haven't captured Robin. Suddenly, the CP0 agent receives a message from the world government's five elders, ordering an immediate termination of Straw Hat Luffy. Surprisingly, this CP0 agent started to worry. If he interferes in Kaido's battle, he will be killed by Kaido. As Orochi saw Hiyori, he became very frightened, mistaking her for a ghost. He was so shocked that he got crushed by a falling rock, and Hiyori took the opportunity to stab him with a nail. Meanwhile, Kaido and Luffy continued their intense battle. Suddenly, Kaido became enraged upon learning that Kid and Law had defeated Big Mom. He reminisced about the time when Big Mom was still young and he had just joined the Rock's pirates. While Kaido was lost in thought, Luffy quickly used Gear 4 to attack him. When Orochi regained consciousness, he realized that he couldn't transform anymore. It turned out that Hiyori had stabbed him with a sea stone nail. Now, she revealed her true identity as Odin's daughter, which shocked Orochi. Meanwhile, Luffy continued to unleash a barrage of punches on Kaido. As the CP0 agent was heading up to the top floor of the castle, he was suddenly attacked by Drake, who had overheard their plans. Surprisingly, CP0 was able to counterattack against Drake. Even though he took a series of punches from Luffy, it was still like mosquito bites to Kaido. Undeterred, Luffy increased the strength of his punches, causing significant damage to Kaido, but he still counterattacked Luffy. Surprisingly, Kaido was still intoxicated. He transformed into a dragon and rushed to bite him. Kaido soared into the sky and shot a massive fireball at Luffy. The attack was so powerful that it pierced through the entire island. But Luffy managed to switch to another form and escape. Now, Luffy immediately returned to attack Kaido as his gear 4 was reaching its limit. So, he inflated his arm into a gigantic size. Luffy intended to unleash a tremendously powerful attack to finish Kaido. As a result, Kaido was struck and fell to the ground, however, Luffy realized that he hadn't completely defeated Kaido yet, so, he charged in once again, unexpectedly, he was hit by Kaido's club, sending Luffy flying, Luffy realized that he couldn't afford to lose, so he tightly sealed his mouth, preventing any air from escaping, with determination in his eyes, he stood up and declared, this is my final attack, if I can't defeat you with this, then I'll be the one to lose, as a result, Kaido also decided to put all his strength into a single attack. Both of them unleashed their strongest moves, and unexpectedly, the CP0 agent jumped in, holding Luffy's hand, which reminded Kaido of his previous battle with Odin, but he couldn't stop it this time. Consequently, Luffy took a blow from Kaido, causing him to collapse completely. Kaido's face was filled with disappointment, and Luffy exhaled all the air out, returning to his normal state. As he was falling, Luffy's heart started pounding like a drum, and Kaido realized that Luffy couldn't stand up anymore. Finally, Kaido emerged victorious, but he was still very angry, because this CP0 agent dared to interfere in the battle. The other CP0 agent had already prepared a coffin in advance, so he stood still without any worry, allowing Kaido to finish him off. At this moment, Kaido still felt regretful about the battle with Luffy, making him extremely furious, and he created lightning bolts in the sky. Suddenly, Kaido transformed into a dragon and flew down towards the castle, leaving everyone surprised and unaware of Luffy's whereabouts. Kaido declared to everyone that Luffy was dead, leaving them all in shock. The Straw Hat crew couldn't believe it, and Nami, infuriated, scolded Kaido as a liar. When Kaido was about to deal with Nami, Marco quickly intervened and protected her, so, Nami remained safe and unharmed. Kaido declared that he would turn all the people of Wano into slaves. Kid and Law are currently being attacked by the soldiers because they have exhausted their strength. At this moment, all the samurai are feeling desperate. On Momo's side, he is feeling terrified as he realizes that Luffy has been defeated. However, Yamato refuses to give up and continues to fight, determined to defeat Kaido. Meanwhile, Luffy remains motionless on top of the castle, and Kid and Law struggle to stand up and keep fighting. Nami still believed and said, Luffy, you must fulfill your promise to everyone. 
Unexpectedly, at this moment, Luffy's heart starts pounding, sounding like a drum, making Zunesha recall past memories. He said to Momo, Do you hear the sound of the drum? For the first time in 800 years, it has finally come. While Luffy was beginning to transform, Momo asked in confusion, Who is he? It's Joy Boy, he has returned. Luffy has also regained consciousness at this moment, and his hair has changed to white. He doesn't understand how he can still stand up. Clearly, I have already lost. Suddenly, Luffy feels very happy, and he bursts into laughter. While the tremendous power within Luffy continued to radiate, he underwent a complete transformation. His hair and clothes turned white. Sanji also sensed an immense surge of strength coming from Luffy, and everyone could feel it too. Luffy is still alive. At this moment, Luffy continued to laugh while looking at the moon. The five elders of the world government realized that their efforts to prevent the awakening of Luffy's devil fruit power were in vain. It turns out that the Gomu Gomu no Mi devil fruit, which the world government has been fiercely protecting, and hidden for over 800 years, it is not an ordinary paramecia type devil fruit. It turns out it is a mythical zone type devil fruit, named Hito Hito no Mi, model. Sun god Nika. It has a body similar to rubber, when active, it can grant its owner the ability to fight freely. While Luffy is still fascinated with his new state, Hiyori is playing a tune for Orochi to listen to. Realizing that he is about to be killed, Orochi shamelessly begs for forgiveness from Hiyori. However, after all the atrocities he has committed against her country, even harming her own father and family, Hiyori cannot find it in her heart to forgive him. Suddenly, Kanjiro's fire-breathing monster appears, notifying Orochi that the plan has failed. Unexpectedly, the fire-breathing creature loses control and incinerates Orochi. While Luffy is enthralled by his new state, he feels like he can accomplish anything, even turning the ground into rubber. This newfound power of mine. This is Gear 5. At this moment, Luffy keeps leaping around and laughing like a madman. He unleashes his conqueror's hockey, striking Kaido and leaving him bewildered by this overwhelming power. Luffy immediately jumps up and inflates his arm even further. While Kaido is still confused about what is happening, suddenly, Luffy's hand shot forward, grabbing Kaido like a worm and pulling him up into the sky. Everyone watching realized that Luffy was back. He immediately flexed his muscles and landed a powerful punch straight into Kaido's face. He could even lift Kaido up, spin him around, and continuously knock him down, causing Kaido's head to spin in confusion. While Luffy was still laughing happily, Kaido became furious. You're still alive, Straw Hat? as Kaido was about to shoot fire at him, but Luffy moved swiftly, even being able to grip the ground like rubber and bounce back Kaido's attack, he turned into a burnt dragon, at this moment, Kaido realized he needed to apologize to that CP0 agent, without him, Luffy wouldn't have awakened his devil fruit power, Kaido was delighted to have a rematch with Luffy, meanwhile, Luffy said, it's time to decide the winner, the video ends here, remember to like, share, and subscribe to support Oni-chan in the next videos. Thank you all for following along, love you all.